Thank you again, everyone who's joining us, joining with us today on this Urban Small Farms Conference. Um, we're really lucky to have the people that we have on today. And to right now, for the next uh, 20 minutes to half an hour, we're going to be hearing from Julie Savage. Julie comes from, um, correct me if I'm wrong, Julie, Enchanted Hollow Alpacas is the name That's of your right. farm, correct? She's That's been right. a around livestock animals for most of her life and has had alpacas and for roughly the last seven, eight years, right? Yes, that's correct. Um, I've, I've had the opportunity to visit her, her farm and she's truly passionate about alpaca fiber, um, truly a, passionate about the animal and is a wealth of knowledge when it comes to this um, species that is actually growing in popularity. So we're really happy to hear from you, Julie, and I'll let you take it away. Okay, thanks, Jeff. Uh, it's wanna, nice to be here with you. Just before you get going, can, can you, you hit your me? presenter mode? The slide Which show? Is? Yep, perfect. There we go. There we go. It's nice to be here with you. Um, I, as Chad said, I am very passionate about raising alpacas. Um, very quickly, I lived on a cow ranch most of my life. Uh, and when uh, when I stopped living on the cow ranch, I missed the alpacas, or excuse me, I missed the cows, believe it or not. And they're big and stinky and can be mean. And, and I still miss them, especially the calving season, which was in the middle of winter. So I was, I've looked for several years for something that I could do that I could handle. Um, I'm getting ready to retire, and I've always been told to retire to something, not from something. So I was thinking about sheep. They're small enough for me to handle on my own, and yet um, they're still animals and I could enjoy them. And I really like the sheep. In fact, we're planning on getting a few of them. Uh, but I saw a show uh, that all of a sudden it was a, it was a woman sheep farm. And um, they, someone dropped off a couple little alpacas and I said to my husband, that's what I want to do. And so we started investigating and we went to a few farms and we got our hands on some alpacas and we read about them and, and we bought our first five alpacas just for fiber. A year later, we went to a national show and my husband was on board after that and we have not looked back since. Uh, we enjoy our animals. We're very particular with our animals, and we love talking about them and sharing them with other people. Alpacas belong to the camelid family. Um, they originated in, in South America. They started being imported into the United States in 1984. Um, the camelid family includes the camel and the guanaco. It includes the llama and the vicuña. Um, alpacas have never lived in the wild. They were created, and they were created by breeding a llama to a vicuña, which gave us the alpaca. There's two kinds of alpacas. There's the Surrey alpaca, which has the long flowing fleece that you see here in this picture. And then there's the wakaya alpaca that has the sh little bit shorter, fluffier animal. And that's what we raise is the wakaya. That's what we have here on our farm. And I prefer them. <clears throat> Why raise an alpaca? Alpacas are very mild mannered animals. Um, they live to be between 15 and 20 years old. Uh, they weigh between 100 and 200 pounds, which means even I can handle them. Um, they um, produce between five and 10 pounds of fleece, which is what I really wanted to get into to begin with. Alpaca fleece is not like wool, sheep's wool. It does not have lanolin in it. It is hypoallergenic and it is flame retardant. So it is awesome stuff to handle. It is considered the next cashmere of our industry. And so it's, it's really fun to work with alpaca fleece. They um, eat, alpacas don't eat a lot. They're not hard keepers. And that is one of the reasons that drew me to the alpaca because it wasn't expensive to raise an alpaca. Alpacas, unlike cows and horses who will eat about a quarter of a bale of hay a day, 
alpacas will eat 2% of their body weight, which is about two ounces, excuse me, two bales a month per animal. So they're not, they're not really expensive animals to raise. Um, an acre of grass, pasture grass, and they eat grass hay, by the way, uh, but six alpacas can live very well on an acre of grass. Um, they're pleasant to be around. They have soft pads on their feet. If you have dogs or cats, you see the uh, pads on the bottom of their feet with the toenails. Well, alpacas have the same thing. So they do not dig up your pastures um, unless they're really muddy like we have right now. Uh, they're pretty gentle on the pastures. They also do not have top teeth. They have a dental pad, they have the back molars to chew, but they don't have top teeth, which is really nice on your pastures because the grass doesn't get pulled out by the roots. Uh, they do eat it down, uh, but it does come back. Uh, they don't have, they don't make a lot of noise. They don't have a big moo or a neigh. Um, I don't know about goats or sheep. The sheep have a ba. I don't know. Do goats make a sound? I'm not sure. But alpacas have a little humming sound. They do have a very loud cry when they set off an alarm. Alpacas are herd animals and they need to be kept with other alpacas. You see sometimes these videos on Facebook with one little alpaca coming down the stairs. That's really cruel to an, an alpaca. They're animals um, and they need to be kept with other animals of their own species. They can live very well with llamas. I've seen them with goats and sheep. However, goats and sheep carry a high parasite load and alpacas do not. We do not treat a whole herd of alpacas for parasites. We watch our alpacas very closely and if they start having issues, uh, losing weight, um, or just don't look quite right, then we start doing parasite tests and we can treat one alpaca, not the whole herd. Alpacas come in 16 natural colors and every variation in between. Uh, and they now have, they are now producing Harlequin and Appaloosa alpacas and they're beautiful. And I'm really excited to see some of some yarn made out of Harlequin and Appaloosa. They're beautiful, beautiful fleece. Alpacas need to be sheared yearly. Um, this, this picture on the right hand side, you can see the crimp in the, in the fleece, but then at the very end, you see all that nastiness. This is called the Korea fleece, a baby alpaca. Um, this little girl was born in the fall. We, it turned off cold. We didn't want to shear her. We wanted her to keep her fleece to keep her warm. Um, most people will shear in the fall and put a coat on him, but we opted not to do that. But you can see um, if I don't cut off that bottom part, the whole year's worth of fleece is lost and she had some really nice fleece. The Korea fleece has barbs on the ends of it. And as they roll in the grass and in the straw, it catches everything. Um, so it's, it's really important if you have a show, if you think you're gonna show that animal or may wanna show that animal, that you shear them in the fall and put a coat on them if at all possible. There's, a, there's something that I really want to touch on here um, before deciding to um, raise alpacas or buy your first alpaca. There's some questions that you need to ask yourself. What do you really want to do with the, the alpaca? Do you want it as a pet? Do you want it as a fiber animal? Or do you want it as a breeder and a show animal? And the reason that you need to ask these questions is because pet quality animals are they don't have great fiber. Um, they, their fiber is short or it has a lot of guard hair, but they're, they're nice animals and, and you just want them as pets and you're gonna keep them in your, in your field out back and, and just love on them. And that's great. Then you wanna buy pet quality animals. If you want fiber quality animals, get your hands on that fiber and make sure it's nice, good, soft, long fiber. If it's not, it's not worth purchasing the animal for fiber animals. The other thing is show and breeding animals. 
um, fiber animals and show animals kind of go hand in hand. However, um, breeding show animals, you need to remember that uh, it they take into consideration not just the fiber, but the conformation of the animal. So they want the animal to stand straight, the ears erect, the back straight, the rump kind of rounded, um, the front legs straight. There are a lot of things that go into showing animals. And so be sure to ask yourself these questions before you purchase your animals, because if you don't, and you decide you want to breed or show and you've purchased pet quality animals, then you're starting upside down and it takes years to breed yourself out of that. So what you want to do if you're going to buy fiber or breeding animals, show quality animals, you want to purchase the very best females that you can purchase, that you have um, the ability to purchase uh, money-wise. And you can always do um, an outside breeding to a really nice male to get your breeding program going. You want to keep your females and males separated, of course. Um, alpacas can breed year round and you don't want to do that. We breed in June for May and June creas and usually um, they're, they're pregnant 11 and a half to 12 and a half months. Uh, and usually in the spring, they will have their babies late. And in the fall, they'll have their babies early. They usually have their babies before two o'clock in the afternoon. So anywhere from five o'clock to two o'clock in the afternoon, we're, we're on point for the, those babies to be born. Um, they can be born in the afternoon and they can be born at night, but those are rare incidences. And if I have a baby born at nighttime, then I'm looking to see if there's something wrong. The biggest threat to an alpaca are neighborhood dogs, believe it or not. Um, neighborhood dogs get running around and they're bored and so they start running and they can wipe out an alpaca herd in one night along with other animals. Last year there was a group of neighborhood dogs that got together and wiped out not just a few alpacas but they wiped out 30 animals all together in one night. So um, we have guardian dogs. There are coyotes around here and um, in other places in the country, they have bears, mountain lions. We have a mountain lion down by the river. Um, so we do have guardian dogs to protect our animals. And these dogs live right with the animals. Tucker here at the bottom of the screen laying down, he's our old Maremma. We really like the Maremma brand. Um, they're milder animals and they tend to stay right with the animals. Pyrenees are great guardian dogs. However, they tend to patrol a little further and sometimes past our fences. The one on the left was Lexi. None of our dogs are mean. We won't have a mean dog on our farm. Lexi, if you'll go to our website, there's a video of her playing with one of my alpacas on the website and how gentle she is and yet how fierce she can be to protect them. Uh, we no longer have Lexi. I do events on my farm. And after one of my events, Lexi disappeared and we had a suggestion in our suggestion box to get another dog. And so we think someone stole her. But guardian dogs, um, you don't have to have guardian dogs. Uh, we do just to protect our animals. We shear yearly, and this is a must for alpacas. Um, alpacas have to have shelter. Uh, if it starts raining, our females are in the barn. If the first drop, they are in the barn. And they don't like wind either. Our boys, they'll stand out in the rain and the snow. They don't care. But um, the girls, they're in the barn right now. Um, so you do have to have shelter. But we also shear in the spring, usually the end of April, 1st of May, we do our shearing. Uh, and that is so that the animals don't overheat during the summer. And then our creas are born in May and June and into uh, July. We do take a break and then we start having babies again the end of August and into September. So um, we shear to keep our animals comfortable. Um, 
as you can see with these two pictures, this is two different animals. We lay sheep, I understand, I've not seen it, but I understand that sheep can be sheared steering, standing up. Alpacas are laid down, and that is so that they, they're a little bit bigger than sheep, and it is so that they don't kick somebody, hurt somebody, or hurt themselves. So we lay the animal down. The blanket can be taken off in two pieces if you want. If it's a show blanket, it can be taken off in one piece. And this year is taking these blankets off in one piece. And they start and do the belly first, and then they do the hips and the neck, and then the legs and the belly. Every bit of the alpaca fiber is usable for something. Um, we have uh, first, seconds, and thirds. So the blanket is firsts. The hips and the neck are seconds. And then your belly and your legs are thirds. Um, seconds can still be made into some really nice yarn that can be used for hats and gloves. Uh, your firsts are used for uh, yarn that's going to be put right up against your skin. Um, the thirds, which is really interesting because I use the thirds for bird nesting material, and I also can use it in my garden to, um, I lay it down between the rows. It stops the weeds from coming up, and then in the fall, you roll it up and throw it away. So every piece of the alpaca fiber can be used for something. I also use my thirds for felting projects that I do. Let's talk just a minute about the alpaca manure. Alpacas um, are really cool in that they uh, use the bathroom. They have communal dung piles. And so they all go to one pile or several piles, depending on how many you have. And they do their business in a pile, which makes it really, really nice to clean our barns and our, and our pastures and our corrals. Um, alpaca manure, unlike cow and horse manure, is not hot it can be put right in with your plants and it won't burn them. And it is a fabulous, fabulous fertilizer. Um, alpaca manure is, it's really interesting. There's a lady back East who has a patent on a little tea bag um, of alpaca manure. She sells those for people to put in some water and um, steep it in some water. And then she water, they, you can water your house plants with it. I just do my own and water whatever I want with it. We've been using our manure right now to go in our garden. When we moved here four years ago, there was nothing here, no grass, no, no barns, no fences. So we have put all of this in and the, the ground is nothing but clay. And so we've been putting all of ours in our garden and it is, it is just about to the point that we really like the dark, nice, beautiful soil. So I'll pack it is ready to use. It's a rich soil conditioner and it's um, economically friendly. It does not burn your plants. So I'll pack a manure. There's a guy back east who makes a six-figure income just on his alpaca manure. It's pretty awesome stuff. We do agritourism here. Uh, it is one of my favorite things to do. Uh, alpacas are typically very friendly animals. Some of them don't like to be touched, uh, but you get a couple of feet out there and they're surrounding you ready for that feed. Alpacas um, love kids. Don't ask me, they know, they come up to the fences, they'll put their heads right through the fence to, to look at these little kids and they just love them. Um, I have a special needs class from Logan that comes to tour my animals uh, every year for several years. They've been up here touring my animals. This little boy in the cowboy hat has autism. He's been here several times, some with just his mom, some with the, the class that he's in. Uh, the first time he came here, he would not even uh, get out from behind his mom's legs. He was just scared. By the time he was through with his visit, he had Royce by the hand and he was taking him all around the farm. Alpacas are used for therapy animals um, and they, they're they awesome around elderly people. They're taken into Senior Citizen Center. I actually have a group that comes here for a tour and they love the animals. Alpacas are just very, they have a calming effect. I can have a really crappy day at work and I can come home and go out to clean the barn. And by the time I'm done, my mood is up and 
just in a better mood. Alpacas do that to me. These are some of the things that I sell in my store. These are um, these little alpacas, some of them on the shelf and the bears are imported from Peru. The sweaters and the blankets are imported from Peru. The hats, I crochet and knit my own hats. I also do some um, alpacas. I knit and crochet some alpacas. Uh, I sell yarn, I sell raw fleece, and I sell roving. So there's, a, I, I have felted soaps. Um, there's a lot of different things that I have in my store. Alpacas are really easy to train. This guy's name's Nick Morrow. He is the owner of Hoofs, Humps, and Horns, and he trains all of those animals. He is desensitizing alpacas here in our Impaca seminar. Um, he's desensitizing them to the plastic, and he's also teaching people how to calm them down and get them to let you handle them, halt or train, let you pick up their feet. And he does this within minutes. He can also teach an alpaca to cush. And the really nice thing about alpacas is they remember. Uh, we had him train some alpacas to cush. And a few months later, we went back to see if they would cush and they still remembered and they went down into a cush position. So training alpacas is pretty awesome. Korea season runs from May till uh, September. We were shearing one year a few years ago and the top picture on the left, the gray one is in labor. She was in labor at the time of shearing, we didn't know it. We hurried and got her sheared, put her out on the grass and she had this little gray baby next to her in the right picture within five minutes. So she was ready to have that baby. Our shearer says, I have never been so scared in my life. It's the fastest shearing I've ever done. Picture on the left of the bottom is Balto. The ones in the middle, um, these are some of our last year's babies. The two in the middle are going to be show animals. Zazu is in front. You can see how beautifully conformed he is. Sir Lancelot is in the back and he is the same. Their fleece is gorgeous. And there on the right, there's just some alpaca crea playing. Uh, very seldom do alpacas have problems giving birth, but we like to be on hand just in case. And that is the end of my presentation. So if there are some questions, I can take some questions. Hey, thank you so much, Julie. That You're was welcome. an amazing presentation. I wish I had more land because I would get alpacas for sure. They're fun. <laughs> they are. They look like a lot of fun. Um, I just, uh, we did have one question come in. I just want to remind people, if you have any questions, go ahead and put those in Q&A. But it was, uh, the question was about your trained dogs. Did you purchase trained dogs or were they trained on site? They also want to know if you know a quality dog trainer. Um, I'm not going to maybe answer that one live, but if you want to respond to that in Q&A, you're welcome to back to that um, question. But if you don't mind, just okay. talk about your, your dogs a little bit. You bet. There's several um, brands of guardian dogs. There's the Anatolian, the Akbosh, the Pyrenees, and we have Marema. Uh, we like the Marema because they are just more mild mannered. Um, we have a male and a female Marema. Uh, they are not registered, but we intend to try to get some puppies out of them because our old male is getting pretty old. Um, I do not we train our own. Um, Tucker came to us already trained. When they're born in the barn and they live around the animals, typically their mom does the training. And it doesn't take long to get a new, when you get a new dog, for you to walk them around, introduce them to your alpacas. And a lot of that is bred into them. Um, they do need a little bit of training so that they know the boundaries that you set around your farm and they need a little bit of training uh, our little girl was not born around animals, so we have had to train her that these animals are for her to care for, and she does, but she gets a little excited. She will try to keep them away from the male fence if she thinks they're going towards the males, and so she gets a little excited, and she's still in training. She's a year old now, but um, typically they are bred for this, and so a lot of that is already in their um, breeding, but they do take a little bit of training. I do not know a guardian dog trainer. Um, we have just done our own and it's over time. 
Okay, great. Um, and Julie, during your presentation, you just mentioned your website, um, but I don't think that you actually gave the uh, the viewers uh, what that was. Do you mind just letting us know what your website is? Sure, it's EH Alpacas. Um, it's Enchanted Hollow Alpacas. So if you Google Enchanted Hollow Alpacas, it will come up. Um, we have a website and we're on Facebook and I do a lot of tours. So I'm constantly posting on Facebook and on the classifieds. I post my tours on class, my events on classifieds, but it's EH Alpacas. Okay, great. Um, another question here for you. How well do the alpacas handle the cold weather? Do they need a barn and shelter during the winter months? Alpacas need shelter. Um, that is one thing I cannot stress enough. They do need shelter, especially your, your babies. They're, they need to be out of the weather. However, they have that fleece on them and it's pretty deep. It goes clear up to my knuckle um, during the winter. So they're bred to handle the cold weather. What they can't handle is the heat. Um, they do go in the barn in the winter. Uh, they would rather be in the barn during storms, but um, it's the heat that will kill an alpaca versus the winter weather. Okay, great. Um, oh, really good question here. Um, how many alpacas do you have? Do you mind sharing the average yearly cost of caring for alpacas? Hmm, that's a really good question. We have 33 alpacas. We have 18 babies due. Um, as far as cost, we raise our own hay. So I can't tell you the cost of that. We fertilize after every cutting. The best hay for alpacas is grass hay. And the best cutting is our second crop. Um, probably the biggest expense for the alpacas is the grain. We grain daily, our moms and our babies. Our males don't need that as much because they don't need all that extra protein, but our moms and babies need that. So we do grain daily, and that is probably the biggest cost on our farm. Um, a bag of grain costs about 18 to 20 dollars a bag, and that with 33 animals, that will last us. One bag will probably last us. Yeah, three days, maybe three or four days. So that is our biggest cost is the grain. We also put out free minerals like goat minerals, sweet ticks. Um, that is a, a really important thing, especially during the winter where they don't get all the sunlight and the pasture grass. Minerals is really, really important to put out. Just any kind of goat mineral will work. Okay, wonderful. And uh, one last question here, and then we'll probably move on to the next session. Um, can you please spell the dog breed? Marama, M-A-R-E-M-M-A. -M -M -A. Perfect, thanks. Um, and we'll try to get, um, Julie, if you don't mind helping us with this, we'll try to get your website and that, um, that spelling in the chat so people can have it there as well. Um, but really, okay. really appreciate you coming and sharing with yes, us. This is really- Really informative. Thanks Thank so much. You. Okay, 